Annyeonghaseyo friends and welcome back to the Torsi channel for my review of the 2022 film Broker. If you haven't seen the film yet I will keep this pretty much spoiler free. If I accidentally wander into spoiler zone I will definitely give you a warning beforehand so I don't ruin anything for you. It is too beautiful an experience to have anything spoiled. Let's start with a little bit of a summary of the plot and then I'm going to go into my thoughts on the film. The film follows a young single mother who gives up her baby at a baby box at a church. The child is then taken by a couple of brokers who seek to sell the child on. They are being pursued by police who hope to catch them in that action and arrest them for human trafficking. The film follows the mother and the brokers as they seek out a new family for the baby and the officers who are in pursuit. The most notable and best thing about this film for me was its spectacular lack of Hollywoodness. There is a trend in Hollywood, as it has been for a long time, and particularly in big and very popular films, to aim for the lowest common denominator. There seems to be a sense among producers and or writers and or directors, and whoever else has their fingerprints on the film, that at least somebody in the audience is very stupid and you must spell everything out for them or they're not going to get it. We find often in very Hollywood style films a lot of exposition or plot points or character points repeated over and over again just to make sure nobody misses the big aha moment when there is the twist or the reveal at the end. Director Hirokazu Koreeda thankfully is also the writer and the editor of this film and clearly handpicked all of the performers with great intention to be extensions of himself. He seems to be under the impression that his audience is a lot smarter and more observant than the people involved in making other films. He demonstrates his respect for his audience through every shot, through the soundscapes, through the dialogue. He says everything only once in the film, shows you only once in the film, and assumes that you're savvy enough and observant enough to have understood what was going on. Sometimes he doesn't even show you, he just lets you hear what's happening so you can make the intellectual leap. The result of this is a film that feels natural, feels like you're involved in it, that you are there witnessing it firsthand instead of stepped back and watching it as an audience. His shots often give a sense of point of view. What is in the frame is only what you would see if you were sitting there inside the car or just outside of the car or inside the room. There is a cutoff to how much you see and he doesn't force things into the shot in order to spell something out for you. You see it or you don't or sometimes it's off screen and you can hear it and you fill in the picture in your head. His shots are often very close quite cramped because we're inside a van or inside a car that gives us that immediate feel or a quite unusually arranged shot because it is that very natural point of view style instead of a more cinematic style. For me this direction made the film feel more immediate, it made it feel warm, it made it feel like it was something that we were personally experiencing and it allowed us to get to know the characters a lot quicker and it also meant that we never placed any judgment upon the characters. There are plenty of people in this film who are doing bad things. In fact, just about everybody at some point does something quite bad. But at no point do you judge them because you feel so close to them, you understand or forgive their indiscretions very quickly. As each character's modus operandi is revealed to us as we're going along, what we knew instinctively, that they may have done a bad thing but they're not a bad person, is proven to us. Even characters that are meant to be really very much the bad guy, gangsters, are given an, a hint of humanity to them that lets us believe that they weren't always a bad person or they might not be a bad person still, they've just fallen in with a bad crowd. It's a film very much about understanding and forgiveness. Just about everybody in this film starts from a position of not understanding and of being very judgmental of each other and slowly they grow to understand and stop judging each other and hopefully grow to understand and stop judging other people around them in the future. Hirokazu's writing has absolutely no fat on it. There is no wasted word, there is no wasted moment, there is no unnecessary action. Everything unfolds with a sense of urgency and forward momentum. The same thing goes with the editing that if there had been anything surplus you'd never know by watching the film. He cut this back to the bone so we're left with nothing but raw humanity and nothing that feels too cinematic and therefore out of the realm of realism. That level of control extends all the way to his cast as well. 
I don't know how he managed to find an entire cast with the quality of inner life, but he did it all the way down to the very small parts that have a handful of lines. Everybody has the gift of stillness in this film. They have the gift of life behind their eyes. Finding a cast that is able to hold that stillness and still be magnetic is something close to magic. Everybody was note perfect on this. I think they are naturally those performers anyway, but the direction and being with each other seem to really bring out the absolute best in everyone. I would be remiss not to call out very particularly Gang Tong Won and I use connection and chemistry in this. They were absolutely extraordinary. It was heart-stopping, mouth-watering. I will riot if I don't see them in something together again. They were so beautiful, that casting of characters who shouldn't make a connection, but for some reason make a connection, was exquisite to unfold and again so very, very human that we can't help but make connections with people when we're forced into close proximity with them. Even if everything's telling you that is a bad plan, <laughs> you should not involve yourself in that. Kang Dong Won really took me by surprise. I've never seen him in anything before. He was so natural and nuanced. It was a privilege to watch him behave with other people. He watched everybody so carefully and responded to them with micro movements, micro expressions. Things seem to happen without any thought. And I don't mean that as in he's blank behind the eyes. I mean, it was so natural that he didn't require considering doing something before doing it. Song Kang-ho, of course, deserved his Best Actor Award at Cannes Film Festival. I wish I could find the right words to describe what it is about him that makes him so brilliant, but I think what it is is that at no point do you believe he's acting. He has a natural humour. There is something absurd about him. In this ridiculous situation, you would expect a film or a dialogue or a performance to be heavy-handed, to be depressing to be around, but there is the absurdity of life injected all the way through it and plenty of moments where you can't help but laugh. Song Kang-ho delivers those moments so perfectly every time and almost feels like it wasn't scripted, it wasn't meant to happen, he wasn't acting, it was just natural to him. I know most people would be watching this because they want to hear what I think of IU. Hello, UNers. <laughs> my friends, my friends. IU is as brilliant as we expected her to be. The surprise of IU's performance is that most of us looking at the poster or the trailer thought that maybe this was going to be like a Gian 2.0, a My Mister type feel, and it couldn't be more different. The most extraordinary thing in comparison to a couple of things that I've seen is Manuel and Gian are both very old souls, and I've commented a lot when talking about IU's acting about how she seems to hold within her several lifetimes. Manuel, of course, was thousands of years old, and Jian said she was 30,000 years old. She had come around in the wheel of life several times. Both of those characters have been affected by how many times, how long they've spent on this planet, and what the bad parts of this planet have done to them, or the bad parts of humanity have done to them. Manuel is jaded and cynical about it, while Jian is tired and fed up and worn out by it. So young, the character in Broker. If this isn't her first life, I would say it's only her second or her third, which is really unusual for an IU character. So young feels irritated by everything around her. The badness of humanity hasn't bored her yet, it hasn't worn her out, it's annoying her, it scratches at her, it itches at her. So Ayu, or Ayu's character, is abrasive, confrontational, she should be unlikable, except there is so much empathy and intelligence to Ayu, and like I said, with this direction style, you can't help but like everybody. But she is so abrasive that she should be unlikable. Equally, when something good happens to her, as much as all of the bad irritates her and scratches at her, when something good happens, it's astonishing. Simple gestures of kindness kind of blow her mind, like she's never seen anything like that. That yet, never seen somebody care like that yet in her limited lifetimes. Typical to IU, and as is very much the style of this film, that is often shown, not told. In fact, so much is shown, not told in this film, which I find comforting personally and respectful and kind towards the audience. 
I liked as an audience member feeling like the director trusted that I was clever enough to understand what he was showing, that when I watched it for a second time, I saw more and I know that if I keep watching this film, I'll see more and see more and see more because there's so much in the detail and the detail isn't placed in a unnatural scene setting. It is placed in such a natural way that you really must be looking around, kind of like looking around a messy room in order to find the thing you're looking for. It's a film that you definitely want to focus on. I'm not gonna lie, I found it a little difficult to focus when I saw it the first time at the Sydney Film Festival. I love going to the cinema, but in a film of such quietude and stillness, having people around me rustle and get up and go to the toilet and whisper to each other was kind of distracting and annoying. Watching it the second time by myself and allowing myself to be immersed was a really beautiful experience. When this is released on DVD or digital, I highly, highly, highly recommend you watch it by yourself with headphones on because sound is used to great effect in this film. It indicates so much that is happening off screen and is very much a part of the director treating us as intelligent audience members. It also allows you to feel like you really are there in the car or in the hotel room with them. That's how it's shot, that's how it, it's intended to be experienced. So if you do get the chance to really focus in and not be distracted by anything else, I think you'll find this film heightened for you. This has stayed with me since I watched it. I would take this film as a very necessary palate cleanser. If you have been watching things recently where you feel like maybe it was a bit clunky, maybe it was a bit noisy, maybe it was too much, maybe it lacked some heart or some humanity or simply the recognition that life happens. And just because you are forced into a corner doesn't mean that you're a bad person or that the actions you take from there define you. There is a forgiveness to this film that I think allows us to learn to forgive each other and ourselves. This film will wash away the grime and the noise of all of the films that are made for the lowest common denominator. This is your after dinner mint. This is going to clean that all off you. It is a tearjerker, but it'll also make you laugh. Laugh the way you laugh naturally in life when something funny happens that shouldn't have happened. Like if you've ever accidentally laughed at a funeral. <laughs> You'll understand the laughter in this film where it shouldn't be funny. You're at a funeral, but something has happened and you just can't help but laugh a little bit because life is silly and you laugh even at the most inappropriate moments. So it'll inspire both and very much inspire the consideration of why people do the things we do and why you should lead with compassion and seek to understand rather than judge. And I'm actually going to start crying just thinking about that. It is a good lesson to learn. I would love to thank director slash writer slash editor Hirokazu for being so generous with the intimacy of the characters and for believing so much in the audience and their ability to understand and observe. I think that was meeting us with compassion and assuming that we in turn were seeking to understand. I very much hope that you enjoyed it, that you got something out of it that had touched your soul. I'd be really interested to hear what you think. If you haven't seen it yet, bring some tissues just in case, but I hope you enjoy it and get to get into some of the detail. It's layered, it's textured, it is so beautiful. I hope that we all get to support this a lot at the box office. It is so worth it. And after you've seen it, you'll want other people to see it. So go back and see it a couple of times. <laughs> I think everybody needs this antidote to so much noise, so much judgment, so much cruelty that has become pretty normal over the last few years. Thank you so much for joining me for my review. I would love to discuss this with all of you. So let me know what you thought in the comments. And thank you again for joining me. And I will see you soon for more. Annyeong.